Fort Ticonderoga, formerly Fort Charlton. The fort was initially built by the French uh, during the Seven Years' War or the French Indian War, depending on which continent you're on. They built this fort in response to the English building Fort William Henry on the south end of Lake George. The cannons are facing Lake Champlain. That's because the French, during the French Indian War, then the English, during the American Revolution, would sail long ships on the lake and they had to defend this as a coastal position. Also, during the Revolution, well, actually, I'll go back to the French Indian War. The English tried to capture this fort twice, being successful on the second attempt, partly because the French burned the fort as they abandoned it and went back to Fort saint fadrique which was a little further north on Lake Champlain as well. The English took over the fort at the end of the French Indian War. They abandoned it, only to reoccupy it as hostilities in Boston between the colonists and the Crown flared up. Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys, which was a militia group mostly of people from Massachusetts, uh, parts of Connecticut and Vermont. Actually, Vermont was actually part of New York at that time. Came and captured the cannons, brought them down to Boston to ease the siege of Boston by the British. Very important in American history because if Ethan Allen failed here, America would never exist and it would still be colonies. Okay, here we are on one of the bastions of Fort Tigeroga. As you can see, there's some water in the background. That's the Hudson River. Um, this fort was strategically placed. You have Lake Champlain, you have the Hudson, and this way you have Lake George. As you can tell, this is a very strategic location. It's high up on the ground. Uh, the bastions were a fort design used where you have the, an arrow coming out of the square of the fort and the corner. And that was so if the enemy was coming up, instead of facing them straight on and they tried to attack the wall, you would be able to repel uh, attackers on angles with crossfire. And there was some musket fire in the background, so maybe the fort's being attacked, who knows. <coughs> But this fort, unlike Fort William Henry, is a little taller and it's on a hill. A hill is very important for defense, especially during actually any time in history. Because you would see the enemy coming up and you'd be able to shoot them coming down. Now if you follow me, you have the cannon. You're doing some reconstruction work here. So you have a motor. A mortar. And this would be used to shoot over the wall because the, the attackers would build the um, defenses, their own walls, usually um, picket walls or log walls, and you'd be able to shoot over them. This would also be good for shooting out into the river, and it, the long ships that were coming up. in a fort like uh, Fort Wayne Henry or Fort Edward or Fort San Farak, which was to the north, they would only hold, house anywhere between 250 to 350 men. Now we know most of the battles uh, during the French Indian War and Revolutionary War 
you had tens of thousands of men. What would happen is, as those armies would come, they'd bivouac outside of the fort, along the walls, in tents, and come inside for fresh supplies and ammunition. formerly Fort Charlton, which was built by the French in response to the English building Fort William Henry, south from here on Lake George. This is Lake Champlain. And you may be wondering, why do they have cannons facing the lake? Because the French in the French Indian War and the English in the Revolutionary War would have long ships that could attack the fort. So you needed to defend the fort as a coastal defense against the French and the English. 